Uh, we're starting on our worksheet for uh, GCF and grouping. We want to look down at number seven. That's where we're going to put the, some notes. So we are talking about factoring. So first off, Factoring, or if I ask you to factor something, then that is rewriting it as a multiplication problem. Okay, I want to rewrite it as a multiplication problem. Whereas, if I ask you for factors, or what are the factors, that's now a noun. Those are the things being multiplied. An example of factoring versus factors would be like, let's take 12. Okay? If I ask you to factor, using that as a verb, factor 12, what are you going to tell me? Rewrite it as a multiplication problem. What times what is 12? That's all I'm asking for, yep. So you're going to say 4 times 3. But we want to factor things completely. So 4 times 3 is not done, right? Why? We can factor 4. And so it's actually going to be 2 times 2 times 3, right? That's 12. So that is the process of factoring. Rewriting, in this case, we rewrote the number 12 as a multiplication problem, 2 times 2 times 3. Okay? That's factoring. Now, the factors are these numbers multiplied together. 2, 2, and 3 are now factors of 12. Okay, they are factors of 12. We've got to make sure we have our language correct, because again, math is a language. You're learning a language in here. We've got to make sure that we understand what we're all talking about so that you know what I'm asking you to do, okay? So we know about factoring, or if I say to factor something, what I mean, I mean to rewrite it as a multiplication problem. And we know what the factors are. Those are the things being multiplied together. Um, we are going to be factoring polynomials, okay? We're going to be factoring polynomials. All right, polynomials. Poly means many, nomials means numbers. So if we actually went through and uh, directly translated this, we're talking about many numbers, okay? That's what a polynomial, uh, where the root of the word comes from. Um, and you can thank uh, ancient Greeks and and Latins for that. Okay, so um, polynomials. We have the first and simplest type of polynomial is a monomial. All right. Anybody remember what a monomial means? What is a mono? One. one. So monomial just means one number rather than poly meaning many. So it's one number. But remember, we're in an algebra class, so numbers don't always look like numbers. Sometimes they are letters called variables. variables. See, we know so much already. Okay? So sometimes they're letters called variables. All right, so therefore a monomial could just be like five. That's, a, that's considered a monomial. Or, you know, it could have 5n. Okay, there's a multiplication aspect there, right? That's five times n, but together there, that's a monomial. All right, we could have just a variable. We could have just n. We could have numbers, variables, and exponents. We could have 6x squared y. Okay, that is still just a monomial. All right. So that's what monomials look like. They are numbers, variables, exponents, all attached by multiplication. Because if I factored this, if I factored 6x squared y, I would have 2 times 3 times x times x times y. Agreed? 
Okay, so that's just a monomial. It's all multiplication together. Now we have a binomial. All right, so what does bi mean? Two. So binomial means two numbers. When actually we don't want to think numbers anymore. Now that we know what a monomial is, really a binomial just means we have two monomials attached to each other. So for example, we could just have x plus 2. x plus 2 is a binomial. It's got two monomials, x and 2. Uh, we could have oh, just about anything, really. Uh, 6xy minus 2y. We could have 3x squared uh, minus 7x. Okay? Those are binomials. And lastly, I'm sure you guys remember, what, what's the next one going to be? Yeah, some of you already remember. All right, trinomial. All right, and tri means three, so we have now three monomials together. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. Example of a trinomial. It could be far more complex. It could be... 6x squared y cubed minus 7x cubed y plus 13x. Okay? Because remember, the monomials are these guys with multiplication separating each part, right? But if we have addition or subtraction, we now have pieces. Okay? We have, if we have three monomials together, we now have a trinomial. Um, we, there are names for four terms, five terms, six terms, but really, in all practical purposes, nobody uses them, okay? So we have, please use appropriate names for monomials, binomials, and trinomials. Anything past that, we just say a polynomial with four terms, or a polynomial with five terms, or so on and so forth, okay? Um, there is something else that we need, and I just said it, but that idea of a term. If we're talking about a binomial, or a trinomial or polynomial with four terms, um, terms are the individual monomials. These individual guys are called terms. And terms in a polynomial are always separated by addition. Now, I'm saying that to you, and some of you are looking at that going, but you wrote subtraction in some of these. I'm hoping at this stage in your life that you understand that technically there's no such thing as subtraction. What is it? Do you remember? It's adding negative numbers. Okay, there's no such thing as subtraction. It's adding negative numbers. Okay, so of course we're going to use subtraction in this class, but you got to know in your mind that, well, that's really just adding negative numbers. So now, for example, this binomial, 3x squared minus 7x, if I say what are the terms, you need to tell me that we have a 3x squared term and we have a negative 7x term, okay? Because the terms are always separated with addition. Therefore, this negative, that minus, goes with this guy, goes with the 7x. So then, let's go ahead and take a look at our first example, which is simply problem number one. So in problem number one here, we are looking at a binomial, correct? We're looking at a binomial. It has two terms. And so um, we need to first, anytime we're trying to factor any polynomial, the first thing we should be looking for is a GCF. Anybody remember what GCF stands for? That's exactly it. So GCF. is the greatest common factor. Now, what I'm going to show you here in order to find the greatest common factor, um, you do not have to do every time. I'm showing this for you for those of you who feel that you struggle doing this, and so I'm giving you a tool so that you can do this, okay? After today, or even after this example, if you don't need to do this step, then don't do it, okay? You only need to show this. I'm giving you a tool for how do we find the greatest common factor if I have no idea where to start, okay? 
So what we're going to do, we take our binomial. We want to look at the first term of our binomial. Okay, that's, that's going to be the negative 3v squared. And the very first thing we look at in this uh, polynomial, actually, first thing we should look at is to make sure that the polynomial is in the right order. They call it standard form. And what standard form means is that the variables are always written in descending order of their powers. So the v squared came first, then the v term came next. If we had a constant, like say plus three, that would then go at the very end. Okay, so it's always descending order of the powers. If we have that, then this first term is called the leading term, because that's the one out in front. And the number out in front of that variable is then the leading coefficient. Do you guys remember the coefficient, what that is from Algebra 1? A coefficient is the number out in front of the variable. Right, so if I have 5x, 5 is the coefficient of x. Remember that? Remember it now? Okay. So, this is our leading coefficient. Something to remember. If our leading coefficient is negative, we have to factor out a negative. Okay? Always, every time, I want you to remember that because it's true for the rest of our school year. Okay? If your leading coefficient is negative, I want you to factor out a negative. All right, so what we do is we look at our first monomial, that first term, and we factor it. I said we have to factor out a negative, so the negative always gets a number of 1 associated with it. So we factor out a negative 1. Negative 1 times what is negative 3? Well, 3. So the negative 3 factors into negative 1 times 3. What about the v squared? How do I factor that? v times v. That's all v squared means is that I have two v's multiplied together. So I factored that first term. Now I want to factor the second term. Remember, what is the second term? Negative 27v, right? The negative goes with that term because technically that is saying plus a negative 27v, okay? Many of you in here, I realize that your Algebra 1 teachers may have always wanted you to do that and say, okay, change subtraction to plus a negative. I'm never going to count off if you do that because you're, you're right, okay? But what I'm telling you is that at this level of the game, that might start to confuse you. So try really hard to not do that. Try to break yourself of that habit. Keep that knowledge in your head. Don't necessarily put it on paper. Okay? There's one time in this class where I want you to do that, and that's something I'll show you here next at the end of the, uh, after a couple of examples of this. Okay? So we have minus 27v. We know we have to factor out the negative. And the reason I want the negative is because there's a negative on the first term, right? We said at the beginning we have to factor out a negative. So I got negative 1 times 27, but doesn't 27 break down? What? 3, and three times 9, but wait a minute. Three doesn't? Three. Yeah, 9 breaks down, 3 times 3, and then the V is just times V. We have one V at the end. All right, now again, I said this before we started. Are you going to have to show this work on every problem? No. This is to help you if you don't know where to start. If you have no clue what you're doing, factoring polynomials, Start by doing this. See if you can get a GCF. So to find the GCF, now that we have it all factored down, is we circle what's common. 1, negative 1, excuse me, a 3, and a V. So our GCF is negative 3V. Okay? We're pulling that out of a binomial. So therefore, we still have a binomial left behind. So the binomial that's left behind is going to be inside these parentheses. And notice I'm factoring, so I'm rewriting this as a multiplication problem. Negative 3v and then a parenthesis means negative 3v, 3v times something, right? Well, what's left in those parentheses? What's the binomial left behind? V, ooh, not times. V plus, because remember there was a plus sign here, plus 9, yeah v plus 9. Why was it subtraction to start? Now it's plus because we factored out that negative 1. We factored out that negative 1. Okay, so that was kind of the long explanation of what we're doing. I'm hoping, um, if not by the end of today, definitely by the end of next week, 
that you guys are starting to get the hang of that and uh, we don't have to show each step for that to find that GCF. That's our goal, okay? So before I move to the next example, are there any questions? Let's take a look at number three. Number three, the way I would like you guys thinking about this is I would like you guys to look at the binomial. We have a binomial. Is it written in the proper order? Yeah, x squared's first, then our x term. So now look at the coefficients, two and four. Is there any numbers common between two and four? Any factors common? Two. two. So we're going to be able to pull out a two. How about now look at the variables, x squared and x. Anything common between x squared and x? x. How about an x? So 2x is going to be my GCF, my greatest common factor. Boom, done. We didn't have to factor things out and circle stuff. Only do that if you have no clue how to start, okay? All right, so we had a binomial to start with. Therefore, we still have to have a binomial in our answer. So think of it this way. 2x, if I remember distributing from Algebra 1, the distributive property. Okay, well, use that kind of as your check. 2x times what gives me 2x squared? 2x times what gives me 2x squared? 2x times x gives me 2x squared, right? Because x times x is x squared. Okay, now 2x, and this is close to the answer. Yeah, you were putting them together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 2x times what gives me 4x? 2. And it has to say plus 2, because we, remember, we need a binomial. We're m distributing here to get this term. We're then distributing there to get that term. Okay, we have to end up with a binomial. And also as a side question, can you add x plus 2 and get 2x? Yeah. No, you cannot, because 2x means 2 times x. But we have 2 plus x, or x plus 2 actually. Okay, so no, we cannot combine those. That is that concept of like terms that you dealt with in Algebra 1. They have to have like terms to be able to add them together. So this is our answer. Let's try one more. Any, well, any questions on that before I move on? I got the 2 because I was thinking to myself, 2x times what gives me this? And 2x times x gives me 2x squared. And then I thought, 2x times what gives me 4x? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so 2x times 2 is 4x. Okay? All right. So... Number five, I would like you to work that on your own. Consult your neighbors. Consult your neighbors. Go. First thing I see when I work this is that my leading coefficient is negative. So I know I have to factor out a negative. Okay. Next, I look at the 3 and the 21. Anything common? Yes, 3. Then I look at the variables, a squared and a. Anything common? Yes, an a. So there's my GCF. I have a binomial left behind. How do I know it's a binomial? Because I started with a binomial. All I'm doing is pulling a common thing out of my two terms. Okay? So negative 3a times what gives me negative 3a squared? A. a. And now here's where some of you are going to goof. You're going to forget that you're taking out a negative. You've got to really think about it here. Negative 3a times what gives me positive 21a? Negative 7. Don't automatically say, since this is positive, this must be positive. Uh-uh. Think through. A negative times a negative gives me that positive. All right. And there's our answer. Well, we have another process. Right now, we were just factoring out a GCF. Okay, basically taking a monomial out of a polynomial. The polynomials we dealt with were just binomials, but you could do the same process for a trinomial. Okay, you can just factor out a monomial from all three terms of a trinomial. Nothing changes there. But let's go to the side. We now have four terms. We now have four terms. So, first things first, let's take a look at number 11. Number 11. And the process that we're going to be learning here has a name. It's not just factoring a GCF, it is factoring by grouping. Oops. 
All right. So we're going to factor by grouping. You use this process. We only factor by grouping when we have four terms. A polynomial with four terms, we factor by grouping. Okay? And what you want to do first is you want to pay attention, is it written in the proper order? Descending order for your variables. Let's see, x cubed, x squared, x constant. Yep, we're good. So next, for grouping, we literally take the first two terms and put parentheses around them. We group them together. Okay? Now, key thing. This example is fine. The next example we do, we're going to have to make a change. You have to have a plus sign in between your two groups. Have to. Okay? Some of you had Mrs. Seeger uh, last year. I know she shows her work slightly different than this. The pro the, the, really, the math behind it is the exact same. We're not doing a whole new math. It's just her, she and I show our work a little different. Okay? In here, for grouping, you guys have to have a plus sign in between your two groups. In this case, we're going to have it. So we're happy, and we just go ahead and group the other two terms together. Notice that the plus sign is not in with that group. Okay? It is the first set of parentheses plus the second set of parentheses. That's what we want written here. Okay? Once you have that, now we just factor like we did on the front side of the worksheet. So look at the first binomial. Is there a GCF that we can factor out of 12x cubed minus 9x squared? 3x squared. Absolutely. 3x squared. Well, now we got to stop and think. 3x squared times what gives me 12x cubed? 4x. Okay? And we got to stop and think. 3x squared times what? Because remember, I'm distributing this back through in my head. 3x squared times what gives me negative 9x squared? Negative 3. Negative 3. Okay, we still have a plus sign here. We have a plus sign here. And now we look at the second group. What's our GCF? 2. two. So I factor out a 2. 2 times what gives me 8x? I'm or sorry, yeah, 8x. 4x. 2 times what gives me negative 6? Negative 3. If you need a hint, Check what's left over here. They should be the same. That's our goal. That's our hope. All right? Now, don't, guarantee, don't just write it down saying, oh, it's going to be that, because maybe this doesn't work. Maybe it doesn't factor. But check that, because that's really our goal. That's what we're looking for. All right, so we have this. Now, please pay close attention at the process here. Please pay close attention. In my mind, when I look at this, I now see a large binomial. Okay, why do I see that? Because I see two things multiplied together, a monomial times a binomial, plus two things multiplied together, a monomial and a binomial. Okay, so in general, if you just think this is a smiley face and this is a frowny face, I have a binomial, right? Okay, so looking at my large binomial, does the large binomial have any common factors between its two terms? Remember, what's a factor? Things multiplied together, right? I didn't say how big or small those things had to be. 4x minus 3 is a common factor. Why is it a factor? Because 4x minus 3 is multiplied to the 2. 4x minus 3 is multiplied to the 3x squared. So therefore, it is a factor in those two terms. And it's common to both, so I'm going to factor it out. So if you think of that thing in the middle there as being a big binomial, I have now taken this term and this term, and I have pulled them out in front of the binomial. Well, then what's left inside? 3x squared plus 2. Excellent. Have to 
have to? No. No, those two binomials, you know, think of uh, 5 times 2 and 2 times 5. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. So number 13, we have, again, four terms. So what's the process we're using? What's it called? Factoring by grouping, okay? And before we start with that, anytime you're factoring a polynomial, you should always look for a GCF first. Do we have one here? What can I factor out of all four of these terms? A two. It has to be able to come out of all four terms. Don't say, ooh, six comes out of these guys. Well, it doesn't come out of the 10. Ooh, M comes out of all of them. No, it doesn't come out of the 18. Okay, it's got to be able to be factored out of all four terms to be a GCF. So two is our GCF. And so it's going to be two times everything that's left inside. I'm using a bracket just to, so I don't have a whole bunch of parentheses and I get confused looking at so many parentheses. Brackets and parentheses mean the exact same thing. Okay, they are totally interchangeable. All right? So two times what's left inside here. What do we got? 5n cubed. Minus 15 m squared. 15 m squared. Minus 3m. 3m. Plus 9. Plus 9. Perfect. Now we factored out the GCF. We can now use factoring by grouping. So I take my first two terms, group them together. Bells and whistles are hopefully going off in your head right now because do we have a plus sign between our two groups? No. No, we have a minus. So this is the only time in class where I 100% need you to change that minus to addition. And we do that by saying plus a negative 3m. And now we can group the negative with the second group. And we have our plus sign in the middle. Okay? And we just continue the process. We have to first take the GCF out of our first group. So it looks like 5m five, five squared. Very good. Don't forget the 2 comes along for the ride. It's 2 times 5m squared times what's left in that binomial. If I'm taking 5m squared out of this, I'm left with an m minus 3. Because 5m squared times m gives us the 5m cubed, and 5m squared times negative 3 gives us the negative 15m squared. Plus, now we're looking at the second group. What's the bells and whistles that should be going off in your head for the second group? What about the 3? It's negative. The leading coefficient is negative, so therefore we have to factor out a negative number. I'm factoring out a negative what? A negative 3, because three. 3 goes into both 3 and 9, right? So we're factoring out a negative 3, which leaves us with what inside the parentheses? Plus. A positive M Minus and a negative three. 3. Again, because negative 3 times M gives us negative 3M. Negative 3 times negative 3 gives us the positive 9. Okay, now again, this is that big situation. We have the big binomial going on here. I have a common factor of negative, I'm sorry, m minus 3, and I want to grab that and factor it out in front. It's going to sit right next to that 2 that's out, outside the brackets. So I have 2 times m minus 3 times, well, now what's left inside that binomial? 5m squared minus 3. Okay, 5m squared minus 3. So, if you forgot or didn't recognize it as far as factoring out that GCF at the beginning, if you didn't do it there, you have to do it at this step. What will happen here is that either one of these binomials or both of the binomials will have a GCF that you need to factor out. 
Okay? So if you didn't do it at the beginning, you're going to have to do it at the end. And trust me, it's easier to do it at the beginning. Okay? It's far, far, far easier to do it at the beginning, especially if there's variables involved. All right? So please, look for that GCF to start with.